Well, after a 12 hour pretty bumpy flight, finally landed in Japan. I do have a little bit of a headache, but I'm still very, very excited. We're here to learn all about Japanese culture, Japanese food. We'll be traveling from east of Japan all the way to the west. The first thing we're going to be doing is going to make soy sauce. What else do you think that we might see during this trip here in Japan? Well, uh, during this trip, so we're going to experience the soy sauce world and uh, going to wasabi farm and uh, uh, experience uh, Kyoto and Osaka and we're gonna have a lot of variety of Japanese cuisine and going to miso factory as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I can't wait to see what the week holds. Let's go make some soy sauce. Let's go. I first headed east to Choishi to our first destination, which was the location of the Yamasa soy sauce factory. The Yamasa soy sauce factory had been producing soy sauce for close to four centuries. I was hoping on the inside they would let me skip 400 years of work and give me their secret recipe. So we finally made it here. We stopped off on the way for a little bit of uh, onigiri, didn't we, in 7-Eleven on the journey down here. And I'm here with Spud-san and Yamazaki-san in the soy sauce factory and they're going to tell us all about it. Welcome to the Yamasa factory. Uh, we have been making Yamasa soy sauce since 1645 at this location. There are various kinds of soy sauce and we have been using the same species of the Yamasa is, has been inheriting since 1645. That's a key of the uh, Yamasa soy sauce. And that's the secret to the success <laughs> yes. of your soy sauce, is the fermentation. Yes. Every step I was taking closer and closer in the direction where the factory was produced and I could smell the wonderful smells of the production of this soy sauce. We used to, we used to make soy sauce with this cask, but it's a long time ago. And this is wooden, and then this is a traditional way of making. But now we modernize the our cask using the uh, stainless, uh, using a concrete, using the big different uh, material. So, but the, we keep like this because to show what we used to use. But you can actually smell the soy sauce in the air, yeah. in the environment. I can really yeah. smell it. You smell it. Can you smell it? Yes. So behind us, you can see these cylinders, huge tower cylinders here, and they're filled up with, so I'm told, soybeans and wheat. And one cylinder is holding around 230 tons of produce and one cylinder is used every three to four days. So that's a lot of uh, soy sauce being produced every three to four days. We are going to go inside there to see how the soy sauce is made, but here at uh, Yamasa Soy Sauce Company, they have a no filming policy beyond this point here. So I'm the lucky one that we're going to go inside to see how it's made, but I'll see you guys when I come out. Thank you for your understanding. No problem. <laughs> I can remember being super excited. I could smell the steaming soybeans, and then after that, they would roast the wheat, mix that together with the fermented rice, let that sit for three days. Then from there, it gets mixed with the brine liquid, which is actually a salt and water, left there for six months, where it turns darker and darker, eventually this reddish black color. You can see the difference from month one to month six. Month six, you can see a natural gas from the fermentation bubbling there. Then they squeeze it and press it and all the juice, this blackish red juice that comes out is the Yamasa soy sauce, the famous Yamasa soy sauce. Just look at all of these wooden tools all used here to kickstart the making of Yamasa soy. I wonder if they knew back then that 400 years later, Yamasa would be providing the world with soy sauce as it is now. After such a once in a lifetime lesson on soy sauce production, I was delighted to sample some in the form of soy sauce caramel ice cream. It really did go down a treat. Next came the blind tastings. I was presented here with different soy sauces from other producers and sampled them with different types of vegetables and sashimi alongside the Yamasa soy. It was a very interesting experience.
The soy sauce tour took far longer than we had scheduled. I had no time to even check into my first hotel. Instead, I headed straight back to Tokyo, where I had dinner reservations at a very, very special Kaizeki restaurant within a grand hotel. Kaizeki is a very seasonal, multi-course tasting menu where chefs celebrate local ingredients and cooking techniques, all served in a special order. This experience was absolutely second to none. Feeling very tired, I was glad day one came to an end and I could finally get some sleep. Join me tomorrow in day two where I get a guided tour of some huge Japanese mountains in search of the oldest wasabi farm in Japan.